News out of Pfizer and Moderna about very encouraging test results. Pfizer looking for emergency authorization trying to get those shots out as quickly as possible. How do Canadians feel about this race for a vaccine? Does it make them optimistic? Let's bring in Shachi Kuro, president of the Angus Reid Institute, been doing some polling on this. And let's start there, Shachi. How are, we, how are we feeling about what we're hearing from Pfizer and Moderna? Well, actually, it hasn't moved the needle at all, Greg, in terms of people's willingness to get vaccinated or not get vaccinated. So we asked the question, look, would you get vaccinated? And the answers break down in a couple of different ways. We've got 40 percent of the population, which, you know, normally if I'm talking about politics, Greg, I would say that's a significant segment of the population, but it's not the majority saying I would get vaccinated right away ASAP as soon as a vaccine was available to me. That's not, as I say, the majority of people. It's not a ton in this case. You have a further one third of Canadians who say, I would eventually get it, but I'd want to hang back. So what does that mean in terms of rolling out the vaccine and indeed getting it either into the people's arms or up their noses or however it's going to be administered? If you want to get a community, a country vaccinated very quickly, but only two in five are saying, hey, sign me up first. Um, that, that certainly, I think, poses a challenge for public health officials, for politicians. When we talk about trying to convince people to wear masks or, or keep distance or stay home, and, and the problems really persuading Canadians who are profoundly COVID fatigued at this stage, you know, what does that look like around the next stage of communication to Canadians, which is really, uh, if we're going to to get past this, we need to get vaccinated. Now that seems key. Our David George Koch here at BNM Bloomberg has been tracking our efforts in Canada to move the vaccine effectively, uh, the supply chains, and to get it in front of people. But you bring up a great point, the communication challenge of getting those people to take the vaccine. As you take a look at what's happening across the country and how Canadians are reacting to the messages they're getting, is there a bit of confusion out there? Are they not really sure about the message? You know, it's less about regional differences, Greg, and more just about people's own viewpoints towards vaccines. And we know well before this pandemic began, well before coronavirus was ever something in our vocabulary, that vaccine skepticism has been building over the years. So whether it's parents who have hesitated to vaccinate their children against measles, mumps, rubella, or flu shot hesitation, over the years, we've been noticing this building. And so in some ways it's the same you know, group of vaccine skeptics, about 15% according to today's data, uh, who, who are taking their, their worries, their concerns, their anxieties, or even their hostility towards vaccines and applying it from those childhood diseases to flu and now to COVID-19. So we've heard in the past, for example, that many Canadians are concerned about side effects of a, of, of a vaccine. And in this case, the coronavirus vaccine, they're worried it won't work. But there is also a, a subset of the population. It's a small group, but a, you know, it's single digits, but it's, it's still a group of people who say, you know, they don't believe in vaccines, that they believe the vaccines are a hoax, or it's just a way for big pharma to get rich. And indeed, that attitude towards major pharmaceutical companies is something that pervades not only the vaccination conversation, but even conversations around a national health, uh, a national pharmacare program. You know, a lot of people think, well, hey, if, if we had the federal government covering everyone for prescription drugs, there'd be less illness, less sickness in society. But on the other hand, you have some people who say, well, that's just a big plan for big pharma to get rich on, on the governments and taxpayers back. So hostility to towards pharma, uncertainty around vaccines. It's all leading to the fact that fewer people today, Greg, are putting their hand up and saying, I wanna get vaccinated right away, than we're saying this in July. So as we get closer to this, we're starting to see people seize up a little bit. All right, so some interesting findings in terms of how this could all play out. Of course, when we talk about getting this information about what's next for the country, uh, there's been two primary channels, right? Either the political leadership or, or the, the health professionals who are heading up the, the fight in all the provinces. How do Canadians feel about the performance they're seeing from that leadership? You know, in 
in general, you still see majorities saying that they think their public health officials are doing a good job. They think their, their provincial governments are doing a good job. But those numbers are far lower than they were in, in the spring and even in the summer. So again, when we talk about that level of COVID fatigue, there's also a bit of fatigue now with governments where some of the relief programs that have been rolled out have, have happened slowly or have there, there have been gaps or people have disagreements over restrictions. They either think those restrictions in, in places like Manitoba, for example, or we, we heard about the new restrictions that just came into place in British Columbia yesterday. Uh, there are numbers of people who say, look, these restrictions don't go far enough. We need to lock down even further. You also have significant segments of people who say, hey, these go too far and you got to back off because people need to go to work, businesses need to operate. So we don't have consensus as a country about this. And indeed, province to province, we don't have consensus individually in each province around these issues. So you combine that with, I think, a challenge now, which has been it's been the same faces offering more or less the same messages for the part, the better part of eight months, Greg. You know and I know that marketers spend millions of dollars and take months and months and months to figure out how to best target and, and niche create those messages for people uh, from different audiences. So if you've got to reach younger men, you're using a different spokesperson and creating different messaging than you might be for people over the age of 55 who are grandmothers. In this case, this this virus, this infection has come on so quickly and governments don't have the kinds of budgets or the kind of marketing expertise, I presume. And I think people are getting a bit tired of their public health officials and their premiers coming out, doing the same briefings every day, saying the same things every day. And I wonder if, if they're not just starting to tune out at this point. All right. Before I let you go, when you talk about tuning out, in less than 90 minutes time, we're expecting to hear from Ontario Premier Doug Ford. All indications of his early messaging is that the hammer is coming down for several regions, including the city of Toronto. Have the people of Ontario pretty much uh, stuck with their premier and his message throughout this? Do they trust in what they're hearing from him? On that front, you'll see that Ontario is actually one of the provinces that buys in quite a bit, Greg, when it comes to restrictions. And people are more inclined in places like Ontario to say, actually, the restrictions right now today aren't going far enough. They need to be even more uh, uh, stringent. They need to be strengthened further. So in Ontario, you do have a high level of buy-in for for what the public health officials are saying, what the politicians are saying, and Ontarians, I think, are pretty much willing to, to get on board with this in a way that maybe we're not seeing in places like Manitoba, Alberta, Saskatchewan. Shachi, it's always great to get your insights. Thanks so much for taking the time to join us. Okay, thanks, Greg. Shachi Curl is the president, of course, of the Angus Reid Institute.